Hey, this is James T. Khan. I've been working with LibGDX for about a year now, and I've been really enjoying it. One thing that there could always be more of, though, is video tutorials. So I decided to go ahead and take some knowledge that I learned uh, working on the uh, December Game Jam and uh, make a couple tutorials, starting off with uh, this one, which will be pretty, uh, pretty basic. And this is just going into loading a 3D model into LibGDX using the GDX GLTF extension, uh, which makes uh, makes life a lot easier for importing models. Um, it'll it's a breeze, and, and we'll, we'll 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 talk about going from from Blender exporting and then importing into LibGDX and rendering it. All right, so let's get started. We'll get started by generating a new project. If you already know how to do this, or you probably do, you can go ahead and skip. But we'll make it quick. For this tutorial, to keep things very simple, I'm only going to include desktop support. And I don't think we need anything else. All right, that's what I want to see, build successful. So let's bring this project up in IntelliJ. And what I'll go ahead and do is let's make sure we can just launch the application and everything's working so uh, we don't have any issues down the road. Might as well make sure everything's working first as we expect it to. And there we go. We got the, the default screen looking good. So what I'm going to do next is add the GLTF dependencies to our build.gradle file. And we can get those from the awesome GLTF GitHub. So first we're going to grab the Jitpack repository. Under all projects and then repositories. Next we have the version. And then we add the actual dependency. And I think we, we should only need core for right now. But it does support GWT, which is great. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and refresh the Gradle. And make sure everything comes in good. And we'll go to the build tab and got to build success. Make sure the game still starts up. Perfect. Okay, next up, we're going to go ahead and Blender and, and export this 3D model. I'm using this wonderful 3D slime model that I also used for the December Game Jam uh, from Open Game Art. And when you download this model, it uh, is a blend file, so it's in the .blend format, which is perfect. So if I go ahead and Blender, um, what we'll do is, when you have the model ready to go, I'm going to press A to select all the objects. We go to File, Export, and we have this GLB, GLT, uh, GLTF option. Click on that, and we'll go ahead and navigate to our Projects directory. Into our Assets folder. And that's where we're going to save the exported model. 
Now we'll go into the export options. So a couple things to note here. Um, first off, with uh, with the export for the GLTF, you have a couple options. Uh, GLTF binary, which you get a singular file out of. Then you have a GLTF embedded, uh, again, where everything's embedded into the file. Lastly, you have this uh, GLTF separate, where you get separate textures, a binary file, and the GLTF file. Now, you can use GLB. Now, I, I do not. So to support WebGL, and this is on the GitHub as well, you need to use GLTF separates. You got to use the separate option if you're going to support a, G, a GWT build. So with that selected, a couple other things to note here. Um, for this, I usually just use selected objects, say if I have a camera or a light that I don't want to bring into LibGDX, then I can click this and just select that object that I want for selected objects. For transform, this is fine to stay the same. For geometry, you want to, I think by default, most of these are not checked, but go ahead and check each of these options here. And then lastly, for animation, what you want, one thing you want to make sure, and I think it's checked by default, but group by NLA track, you want to make sure that this is checked as well. And um, may, I may go into this on another tutorial, but this is for the, of course, for the animation export. So I'll go ahead and we'll export this file. And uh, another thing to note, so uh, on Blender, uh, version 2.8 and and forward uh, the GLTF exporter is built in it comes uh, comes pre-installed with blender if you don't have that option if you're on 2.79 or earlier then there it's a it's a separate plug-in or add-on that you have to set up I haven't set it up myself but just so you know if that option is missing uh, check your blender version that might be why you're not seeing it if so you might have to install that manually or update to a a newer version of Blender. All right, now it's time to get into, into some code. So thankfully on the GitHub page, there is there are some examples or quick starter templates, which makes this very, very easy to get moving. So we'll go ahead and click on the uh, quick start and I'm gonna use this example to get uh, to get our model rendering. All right, so we'll go to our, not our desktop launcher, we wanna to go to our core project, into our application adapter, and, and this is, we can just paste this in from the uh, repository. And we'll make a couple quick changes here. So here we'll, this is where we're gonna load in the GLTF model. So of course we'll have to update this path from the example. Um, and so we can see here in the models when we exported from Blender, we got all these files uh, separately. So I'll go ahead and let's point to that. And a couple other minor adjustments I'm going to make. And I think by default this will this is going to rotate around the model. We'll go ahead and just put a first person controller in there so we can move around. We're going to need the camera initialized before we can call that. There we go. And I think we also need to set this as the input processor. And 
updated in our render loop. Okay, there's probably something I'm missing, but let's go ahead and start it up and see what we get. Actually, I think we are good. So here we have our model loaded in. I'm using the quick start template, which is very handy. So I'm going to take this time to mention a common uh, issue I see in the, in the Discord channel uh, when working with um, with the extension. And that is uh, either an all white model or maybe the model will look kind of washed out or, or white. So if you're not using the quick starter, if you're kind of following the the individual steps, uh, you may not be using be using the uh, image based lighting. And so let's go ahead and see what happens when we when we disable that. And so there we, we've got the all white model issue. And, and this is because of the ambient lighting. If you're not using the image based lighting, um, you, you, you could try to lower the amount. But you might still uh, get a little of that washed out look. Uh, for me, if I'm not using the image based lighting, I just set this to zero. And we'll start it up again. And since we have a, another light here, I think we have a we have a directional light. Uh, the model is still lit up. So if you get an all white model, that's probably why something to keep in mind. For fun, we'll go ahead and throw a rotation on the model. Uh, just to show how to access the model instance, if you're familiar with how libgdx handles models. And we'll rotate on the Y axis. And we'll smooth up those jagged edges a little bit. Go ahead and start it up. And there we go. So that's uh, that's the end of the tutorial. Uh, please let me know if, uh, if this is helpful at all. Uh, I may do one to show how to run animations in libgdx next. Let me know. Thanks.